Welcome back, and I've got an absolutely brilliant experiment to show you today. What we're going to look at is how electrons are deflected in an electric field. And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar, and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen, and neither did I. So, let's try and explain what's happening. Electric fields apply forces to charges. Why does putting two transparent things on top of each other do something so strange when you turn it through 90 degrees? You might notice that Laika the space dog's not with us again today. She's off on another one of her world travelling missions and more of that at the end. So let's have a look at the apparatus we've got here. Now it looks a bit complicated so what I'm going to do, I hope I don't drop it, is take the important bit out of the stand and this is the bit we're going to be looking at. So this is an evacuated glass tube, there's a vacuum in it. In this end, there's an electron gun that's going to accelerate electrons across the tube. And you might have seen my video on the electron gun. And if not, perhaps have a look at that so you can understand how the electron gun works. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire this up, get a beam of electrons going across the tube. They'll hit this fluorescent screen that's sort of in the way and produce a line of light showing where they're hitting it. And then we're going to see what happens when we put an electric field inside the vacuum of this tube. Let's see what happens to the direction the electron beam takes. So I put the tube back in the stand um, and we're ready to get started. But um, this is going to be quite a complicated video. But don't worry, uh, don't give up when you get to a complicated bit. Um, there's lots of bits of information you can take from this. So even if you don't get the more difficult bits of physics, I'm sure you'll understand the slightly simpler bits. And it might be new to you, so it's definitely worthwhile. So let's get this working. So I'm going to do this quite quickly. Um, to get an electron gun working, you might remember we have a hot filament at this end. And if it's a hot filament, um, you'll see it glowing um, when the tube's working. And I'm going to plug that in, um, I'll use this lower power supply, to 6.3 volts AC. The only purpose of that is to pass current through the wires and get that filament really, really hot. If you remember, electrons will boil off that filament. And if I get those electrons and put them near a very positive anode, so I'm going to put a positive wire here and connect that up to uh, the positive of the power supply, they will be accelerated across this gap. But to encourage them across the gap, let's make the filament side negative. So here we go. And I plug into here. And when I turn on the power supply, we'll see the electron beam. Just before we get started, there's one thing I'd like to do. I'm just going to disconnect the accelerating voltage and turn on the filament. And you might see a glowing here in the tube. Um, that's where the filament is. Um, it might be a bit too light in here, but when you do this at school, you often see a stripe across this screen. And it's really important your teachers point out to you that this is not an electron beam. This is just light from the filament. Uh, they can prove it to you by bringing in a magnet. And if they bring a magnet anywhere near that, um, it doesn't deflect. That's just a light ray. So what we need to do now is to see the electron beam. Right, so we're ready for action. So let's connect the anode back up and the uh, cathode or the uh, minus to the filament. Let's uh, turn on just the filament current, so you'll see that light up. And now for the fun bit, let's take those electrons and accelerate them through 5,000 volts. And there you go. You see this lovely blue stripe across the screen. So that's electrons hitting a fluorescent screen, and as they hit it, they lose kinetic energy and they give out photons of light. So now we're ready to do the experiment that I wanted to do. 
If you look at the tube carefully, there's a metal plate here and a metal plate there. There's a pair of parallel plates and we call these Y plates and you'll see why in a minute. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the uh, top plate to the positive of the power supply. So here we go. And I'm going to connect the bottom plate to the negative of the power supply. And there it is. And what you'll notice is the beam has bent upwards. Now, if you think about it, this is an electron beam. The top is positive and the bottom is negative. So the electrons have been attracted up to the positive plate and repelled from the negative one. So straight away, we know that electrons must be negatively charged. But let's see what happens if we swap these around. And I always think it's a mistake um, to start with the top one as positive, and I'll show you why. Let's make the bottom connector, the bottom plate positive, and the top one negative. And there we go, the beam bends downwards. Um, the reason I like to start with this one is students, if they're not thinking carefully, think that this bending is caused by gravity, and it isn't. It's caused by an electric field that forms between the two plates. And we'll talk a little bit about that next. But let's just have a little chat about how gravity works in this system. So I'm going to switch off the electric field by disconnecting the leads from the power supply. And the beam, given a moment, will straighten out again. Gravity, of course, affects electrons, so the beam will fall slightly. And it only falls a very tiny amount. If I could turn off the gravity in my lab, um, the beam would go straight on. And when the gravity comes back via some mystic process, the beam would drop slightly. And um, it doesn't drop slightly because the electrons have a very low mass. All masses fall at the same rate in a vacuum. It's because the electron beam's moving across the tube very, very rapidly. And if you're up to it, you can do a calculation to work out just how far it drops down. You need to know um, how fast the electrons are going. And some of you will know that EV, the energy they gain here, is equal to half mv squared. So you can solve that for v, the velocity. You can work out how long they spend traveling across the tube because you've got a distance. And you can use an equation of motion, um, s equals ut plus a half at squared or similar, to work out how far the beam goes down. OK, complicated stuff, but because they're going so fast across the tube, the drop in that time is absolutely tiny. So the reason we see the curvature is not due to the gravitational field. It's due to a completely different field forming in this tube, and that is an electric field. So let's switch on the electric field again. And you'll notice the beam bending downwards. So the bottom must be positive and the top must be negative. And that's caused by a force on the electrons. And it's that I wanted to talk about today with this tube. The electrons feel a force because between the two plates is an electric field. And the electric field always goes from plus to minus. So there are field lines going from the bottom plate to the top plate through the vacuum. Now, electrons are deflected the other way, but electric field is defined as the direction a positive charge would move. Parallel plates, field lines going straight up and parallel. We've got a uniform field in this gap, and that's the force that acts on the electrons because they're charged. And you can work out that force. The force is equal to the electric field strength times the charge on each electron. I'm not sure if you can see on the uh, camera at the moment, but um, the beam is a little bit smudged at the bottom at the end. And that suggests that not all the electrons are going at exactly the same velocity. I think we know that they are all the same mass. So as with physics, there's always more I can tell you. And let me just um, do this as well. I've connected to the lower power supply and I'm just going to turn down the accelerating voltage. Now, remember that that's the same voltage that acts on the two plates. And it's really interesting what happens here. I'll turn down the accelerating voltage. And the beam does get a little bit dimmer, but it bends just as much. Have a think about that one. Less acceleration the electrons are going slower, 
so they should bend more because they're spending more time in the electric field. But I've also turned down the voltage, so I've reduced the electric field. So the two effects cancel out. Lower velocity, less electric field, so less force on them. So the curve stays exactly the same depending on whether I turn up the voltage or turn down the voltage. And this path, if I could throw a tennis ball along it, is a ballistic trajectory. It's exactly what a tennis ball would do if I threw it in the lab. Exactly the same shape. So I'm going to flip now to bending the electrons up because I just like to see it that way around. Um, so you don't think it's gravity causing this. OK, so there we go. There's the beam bending upwards. But I've got a second power supply. So there's something else we can do. I'm going to disconnect the negative plate, that's the bottom one, and connect it into the negative of this power supply. And I'm going to disconnect a positive plate, that's the one at the top, and connect it into the upper power supply. So I've now got two power supplies. I've got the electron gun accelerating one here, and I've got a power supply that's switched off, that's the one that will put a voltage across these two plates. And what I'm going to do now is increase the voltage across the plates, increase the electric field strength, and see what happens. OK, so uh, we're going to make the top plate positive, the bottom one negative. Let's turn up the power supply and there we go. You see the beam bending up further and further and further as we increase the electric field strength, the voltage. Um, it's actually in volts per metre. The metre stays the same because the distance between the plates is the same, but the voltage goes up. So we get a stronger electric field. And as we turn down the voltage, a weaker electric field and the electrons aren't deflected as much. So I did mention earlier on in the film that um, these are called Y plates. And now you see why, because they deflect the beam in the Y direction. You can imagine what would happen if we put AC on this. The beam would move up and down. And if we had a screen on the front, you'd see a dot moving up and down. But what if we did the same with another pair of plates in the X direction? We could drag the beam across the screen by increasing the voltage and then dropping it to zero and increasing it again. We could make the beam move up and down too, and we could draw shapes, we could draw waves. And that is a fairly simple explanation of how an oscilloscope works. An oscilloscope uses X plates to move the beam across and Y plates to measure the unknown or changing voltage. So I do hope you enjoyed that video and learned a little bit about electric fields. You know about gravitational fields, but this tube shows the effect of electric fields, another force field that unfortunately is invisible. So we need to use tubes like this to demonstrate it. And we've also shown that electrons must be negative if they're attracted up to a positive plate. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.